Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. We've got Paul Johnson, private investor now. Paul, how are you doing? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm a mere private investor. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> the... Nope. I read your, but I'm very good otherwise. Your thought blog was quite good, so I just wanted to take the opportunity to catch up with you. Are you okay to talk for a little bit? Yeah, absolutely fine. Right, so <clears throat> the markets are totally dire at the moment. So what's your thoughts? There's a good question for you. It, it's, it is... Uh... <laughs> Sorry. If, if I go back a few years, if I go back a few years and think about over the cycles in the resource space, then I I can remember distinctly the times when the the, the markets are pulling back and the the feeling of kind of isolation that you get as an investor, even if your friends like uh, are invested in the same space, you feel very much alone when your portfolios are under pressure, and. Uh, it's one of those moments right now. Uh, but then if I go. Uh, again, back in time, and I think what followed from that, those periods of almost uh, manic depression in some cases, what what always followed was a period of, uh, of fantastic performance, and the market works in this kind of cycle. So at the moment, I feel uh, pretty isolated, pretty alone, pretty depressed, pretty frustrated, all of those different uh, characteristics, but then really buoyed at the same time. A uh, bit of a Jekyll and Hyde type situation, uh, really buoyed by the fact that based on history, we have our big recovery phases after these kind of pullbacks. So uh, I suppose now is a, is a time to look for, for opportunities. Not that you know, uh, it's easy to jump into them because if you're, if you're fully invested or you're concerned about investing your cash, you won't want to jump into other things right now. But you can certainly do research find the good opportunities. I, I know there's money out there because if you look at Greatland today, uh, uh -huh. today's the 4th of September, you see they came out with a great piece of news this morning, which was absolutely wonderful because the market drove the share price down under a penny. Uh, deliberate manipulation by the market, you could see it very clearly. And then they come out with a great piece of news and the share price drives to uh, an intraday high of 1.475, a 50% swing in one day, and closed tonight at 1.29. So, and, and that, that stock generated probably around £4 million of trading, just one stock. So there is money there for the right type of opportunities. Uh, regrettably, it's the same old, same old that most people seem to uh, invest when the share price is already on a big run, rather than trying to fish out the positions where the price is on the floor, which is how you're going to make your biggest money. You know, if you buy a share at one pence and it goes to five, you make five times your money. If you wait for confirmation when the share price has risen already from one to two and a half, well, uh, you still double your money when it goes to five, but the extrapolatory increases that really give you that big portfolio kick only really come, in my experience anyway, from buying at the lows. So in summary, I think it's, it's, it's understandably really difficult for people, uh, including us here in our business, uh, to, to stay sane, happy and under control, you know, when such depressing conditions are all around. But it is a time of great opportunity and you've really got to find the, the stocks that can outperform I've watched obviously I've watched Gretland since 2016 interviewed them numerous times and a few months ago I watched the share price slip below spot six yeah and it was you, <laughs> you knew what was coming it was but for some reason people were happy to watch it slide down there like you say they, they don't seem to pick up on it and then when it's moving it's gathering momentum then the volume picks up yeah, it's, it's because uh, the uh, you know the investor psychology generally we uh, I've done a lot a lot of personal reading when trapped on trains on why people behave in the way that they do they they prefer to be uh, uh, right uh, uh, well sorry prefer to be wrong in a crowd than right in isolation so uh, th there is a great herding mentality with regard to investment and many other things in life which unfortunately doesn't deliver the returns. You, it's, it's the loneliness, the isolation, frustration, buying stocks when nobody else is interested that does make the make a big return for you on the whole, uh, and certainly has done in, in, in my life thus far. So I, I've got to stick to the same mentality, and now I'm looking down you know, my list of uh, shares that I either own or I'm thinking about buying into, 
and trying to find the stocks that are patently undervalued, really under pressure, offer great opportunity, but very few other people are interested in buying them right now. So like we, we put a video out on Sunday, Rick's Rules, where he, he's stating dips are sales and sales are good. So he, he's saying he's, this guy's a, a billionaire, obviously, you know who he is. They've just took a position in Metal Target. Yes. And it, he, he's saying people who live in the moment usually die in the moment. Yeah, well, in fairness, he is. He does some some really good commentary, but let's be quite frank about it. When you're a billionaire, it's easy to talk about cycles with some degree of, uh, you know, calmness about the whole thing. When when you're trying to build uh, from very little, yeah. or you're you're in the early stages of building your uh, your finances personally, it's, the cycles are very painful processes to go through because they uh, you seem to get locked in on the downside. Uh, and uh, locked out of the upside, it's it's a perniciously bad situation unless you you do what is almost impossible, I think, for for new investors to do, and that's take a contrarian viewpoint and literally buy shares when no one wants them, and then when everyone's super excited and happy, you've got to sell them because you have a ready market to sell them into. Uh, and uh, we're seeing that now. Uh, now there are other factors in the UK, of course, because we have both securities that went pop in uh, March. Yeah. That that stock and that cash is coming out in this month, in September, and that will have a, a positive impact on liquidity. We should see a bit of extra volatility as people exit positions that were stuck in Beaufort's and buy into positions with Beaufort's uh, assets that they couldn't buy into before. But liquidity will improve, and that's always good. Uh, the metals, uh, generally in the resource space, are under the cost. You know, copper's down quite consider considerably uh, over the last few months. Um, I'm just looking at the charts, and pretty much all the metals are, are suffering to some degree. Uh, today, copper's 264, uh, and I quite, you know, remember very recently it was three dollars twenty. Yeah, you got zinc at 110, and it wasn't too long ago it was 160, I think, at the high. The only thing that seems to be holding its ground on the the main screen here is uh, is uranium, uh, which is which is quite interesting. And uh, the pretty much across the board, you've got uh, negative conditions, negative sentiment. Limited amounts of capital swishing around. Uh, it is the perfect time to 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 see a recovery come out. Uh, I posted on Twitter recently. I think it was a Matt Geiger interview. If I've got his name right, when he was talking about a V-shaped recovery, so a sharp swing down followed by a very quick correction back higher. And that's. It looks like based on the cycles I've been in, the mini cycles uh, in particular where you get a pullback for a few months and then it goes again. It does look like we're, we're probably in for a pretty quick rebound. And the danger is that if, you, uh, if, if you're not positioned in, in, in the stocks that you like, uh, then when they, when they turn around, it's very difficult to buy in, in any decent volume. Uh, so, and uh, particularly if you're playing with slightly larger amounts of money, then you need to look at trying to get your positions in near the lows and and holding ready for the recovery. There's quite a few stocks on AIM at the moment that are uh, well financed or uh, recent and recently had financings or can get finance on sensible terms. And probably if you want to have some degree of security, that's where you should place your cash. Uh, it's the lowest hanging fruit if you've got. Uh, potentially a high value business that's that's valued at next to nothing with a good degree of underlying working capital and there are plenty of those around at the moment in the markets now, I'm, I'm looking at a company right now I, I won't say who they are but uh, <clears throat> there's no liquidity and I'm watching these guys so I'll probably talk about them in the future but it's amazing they've got they've got things in place there they'll probably go for the mining license next year and Nobody's even picking up on them, so that's yeah. the kind of thing. And I the like valuation's to... low. Yeah, 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 the valuation's low and liquidity's low. Well, one of the yeah. barometers, benchmarks, uh, yeah. whatever that we use, we use is not necessarily the. Uh, we like the small caps because they can tend to move a lot faster. But we like to see the shares that have got a degree of liquidity running through the markets on a pretty regular basis. We're looking for companies that have a. You know, good working capital, access to to money if necessary. Uh, good business stories because people talk about stories. They like to buy stories. They don't like to buy dull, 
uh, propositions that you know where they can't really uh, <laughs> can't understand what's going on. Uh, management teams they like to have a degree of trust in. Well, good luck with that because there's not that many of those around, uh, but there are a few, and uh, they you know where uh, they, they can they can envisage that that the marketplace will. Uh, kind of spring to life at some point in the future. Uh, th- th- we probably use over the last couple of years eight or nine different factors when we, we're trying to pick up stocks that we uh, have some potential. Great, Greatland was a phenomenal case in point where we that's, uh, the lowest buy I think I made in Greatland was some, I might be wrong on this, but it was I think it was just below point zero. 0.05 pence and then obviously went up to I think 2.6 2.7 inch a day high at the back end of last year so 50 times return if you'd have held from the lows to the highs which is nine impossible of course uh, and then sold right at the top having bought right at the bottom but it shows it can be done what people I think don't necessarily understand uh, I've been through a few of these now uh, this the, the Greatland scenario will happen with many many stocks in our space in the resources space won't happen with all of them but there will be plenty of examples of companies that have considerable returns 10 20 30 40 50 times potentially even more I mean uranium stocks when the uranium really fires it's probably the biggest sector for those massive multi-bagging returns. But there will be many examples of this. But you will only get into them if you are holding your positions from lows, buying the shares at or around the lows, and not being too dissuaded by the market trying to shake you out of positions. And that's quite a difficult thing to do. And that's what we're trying to do here. It's uh, I've been investing for 30 years and, uh, and on aim for 20. Uh, and it's just as hard today as it was 20 years ago. I've got more experience, but the psychology is just as hard. You've got to hold through difficult times. Uh, you, you worry about your investment, your capital, and all the rest. Uh, I've seen it happen enough times that had I have sold at the point of, of highest uh, concern and where the depression is the, you know, almost uh, terrible on a day-to-day basis, had I have sold in the past at those moments, I'd have missed the biggest fire ups in the market and the biggest portfolio return so we're just uh holding tight buying positions and uh sometimes uh as well and uh, building on the uh the stocks that we think are really really cheap what do you think's going to happen then closing into 2018 for the sector results the markets well i'm perennially wrong on this uh, so if I if the first answer is I say absolutely nothing is going to happen, <clears throat> and you always have to take the first answer, <laughs> and then if I say secretly I think we're we're going to see some significant returns uh, made over the next few months in certain shares, I think you have to be selective and careful. And uh, people know the kind of positions we've got because we're notifiable in quite a few of them, yeah. uh, not all uh, for for sure, but we're notifiable in quite a few. Uh, and I think we're going to see some real uh, runs in, in value and, uh, and make a, a considerable return. Uh, if I'm wrong, I don't really mind too much. We can wait if we have to, but I prefer it to happen now because there's so much you can do with that money now. Uh, in terms of reinvestment and new opportunities, it would be nice to have more cash now. What's, I've got to ask you this question. What's your average holding time for a stock? <laughs> Oh, that's a great question because every now and again we get bashes on the discussion board saying that you know we we, we drop stocks really really fast and that's simply not the case. Yeah, in the case of Greatland, where the I, I was buying uh, the, the the batch of stock uh, that led me to have a notifiable position from last quarter 2015, I think, and then. It was a two-year holding period. Uh, Thor uh, Mining has been, I think, an 18-month holding period so far. Uh, I'm just looking around the, you know, the different shares. Uh, generally speaking, I would say our, our average holding time for most of these shares is probably around 12 months, which is in just below Rick Rule's suggested. You've got to hold, yeah. hold these things with an 18-month view <clears throat> because you need. To, he says you need two field seasons. Well, of course, he would say that because he's in North America where for a lot of the stocks that he would invest in, the weather's not good and you can only do work in part of the year in Canada and so on. 
but in our case, you know, lots of the stocks that we hold are in Australia where they can get super, super hot in the Northern Territory, for example, but things can still be done. Uh, it's not quite the same as working in Northern Canada. Uh, so, and also, we're in an interesting point in the markets where things are chronically suppressed price-wise. The market makers in the UK have manipulation uh, central going on and uh, with no or little regulation, should I say. And uh, so that creates an environment where the prices get artificially suppressed for a longer period of time, but then suddenly spring back to life like uh, like rockets. So, uh, yeah, so I would say about 12 months for us. I'd like it to be about 12 minutes, really, <laughs> because, because what I'm not... Uh, anyone who says, oh, there's a, the, you're a trader or an investor, and that's absolutely tosh. You, you're just there to make money. And quite frankly, anyone who wants to sit there and hold for 15 years whilst the story plays out is off their rocker. You want What you want is to buy into a stock and for the share price to go up 10 times in five minutes, sell out, bank your money, run out the door, buy the next one or buy a nice holiday or a car, pay your bills, pay off your debts, whatever it might be. Uh, you don't want to hold forever. So, yeah, I would like it to be really, really short. But the reality is that uh, a lot of the time it's, uh, it's it's 12 months average. And for some of the shares, you've got to wait a couple of years. I was, and I just had an inbuilt belief that great and would absolutely fly at some point. I thought the market was chronically short the stock. I think the market, I felt the market had been short the stock for a very long period of time. I think there were a number of other shares quite a few at the moment where the market is significantly short the stock uh, it's there's no reports of this because it's not done in an official uh, manner you know if you're going to rob the post office you don't actually uh, publish the details on Facebook just before you jump in the car with your balaclava on you know things like this happen secretly in the background mm. uh, and it's a shame because a lot of investors get mugged on the way but uh, if you understand how the market works then you can see these situations transpire. Uh, and of course, because we have little regulation in the main, uh, in, in the London markets, it means that uh, people can go short stock naked, which is legal, well, against regulation, shall we say. And then they, uh, they find ways to cover either through the market or through financings, which are done very often, <laughs> quite shockingly and ironically, at big discounts. So, you, I'll yeah, it, it's... I leverage the position by using different outlets uh, yeah i mean there's plenty of ways of doing it occasionally yeah. they get see the out. These uh, days. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean you see occasional very occasional tweets or communications from company directors that have the balls to actually come out and say this is happening to my share you're not allowed to do that because of course the market squashes you if you even dare suggest that there's some kind of illegality or inappropriateness going on in the london financial community uh, but it's pretty much pernicious in across the you know uh, the uh, the breadth of the market. There are some very good brokers out there, some very decent people working hard for their client companies and for uh, investors, and there are some rogues. Uh, just uh, but you know the, the the way it is, you you you've got to be very careful when you're uh, when you're investing, and particularly when you've got a limited experience of what what happens, and what goes on. Uh, the, the best protection that you've got is you, you is to go and buy stuff that's really cheap with good working capital. doesn't have to do discounted, horrific placing that can destroy your, the value of your investment with a good story, good management, and so on. That requires you to sit down and do your research, really, really pour through all of the, you know, the, the, the company documents. Speak to the directors maybe a little bit, but not too much because you might fall in love with them and... Uh, and then your decision-making process is skewed and biased. Yeah, true. Uh, but, you know, watch a few presentations, interviews, that kind of thing, uh, just to get comfortable. Don't listen to what people put on bulletin boards and be very careful with that and with Twitter. People talk their own book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and talking your own book doesn't just mean that if you buy shares, you want to tell people how good you think they are so the share price goes up, but also that people who are short stocks uh, will we'll, we'll sponsor or themselves will discuss on bulletin board how bad stocks are to try and get the price down to favour their own economic position, which is for the price to fall. Uh, so really it's down to you and your own research. It's, it's quite tricky. The, I've noticed that 
I better shut up in a second, but it is a subject that I'm quite passionate about passionate about but i've noticed the uh if you look at discussion boards twitter and the like that when a share is on is unpopular when it's there's not uh and the share price is quite low then you don't get too much discussion going on but when something gets popular and shoots up in value then you will see a dramatic amount of discussion as people get together by the stock and it becomes a positive community and so on well generally speaking i've tried to avoid that type of situation when i'm investing and I prefer to go for the moribund, dead discussion boards well, where there isn't too much kind of Twitter commentary about it because it's the best investment opportunity. But it is depressing, and you spend probably 80% to 90% of your life absolutely bored, uh, senseless, because there isn't an awful lot to talk about. And then eventually it springs to life and goes crazy, uh, the stock and then it becomes very popular and everything's great and you get this 10% of your investing time is a buzz but the rest of it is absolutely terrible but that seems to be the way to, to make money it's not it's not Wall Street uh, I mean I did think about wearing braces once you know and, uh, and, and smoking big cigars in the office but you can't do that anymore it's illegal both to wear braces and smoke big cigars but the it isn't like Wall Street. It's it is just boring as hell if you're gonna make some serious money in the UK financial markets and you've got to watch your back and be very, very careful. Well I usually find as well that people watch share prices every day. It's you know when I used to trade I used to buy share and then that was it. People would send me a DM to say they'd gone up by so much or down by so much. But I never used to look every day because I just don't understand that. Oh, I look every minute. That's I was getting told off about it yesterday, actually. Yeah, my, my daughter tells me that I should not be looking at it every minute and I should find other hobbies to do. So I suggested maybe playing the guitar, learning a language and doing all these kind of things. Uh, and she didn't look at, you know, convinced that I was serious about it. And I'm not because the, 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 you make the money because you, if, you, if you follow the pattern of the stock, you see what's going on, you see who's, which market makers are where. What the uh, the trading volume is, how the price responds to certain events in the day, and and just understanding the market. Uh, but it, it, it's time consuming, incredibly boring, incredibly dull. And on that note, uh, we're hopefully pulling everybody off investing. Then I better <laughs> shut up. No. Just last question: Are you doing any investments in Canada, lithium or anything like that? Yeah, we've got uh, we're, we're doing three things at the moment. One, uh, well, is our continuing aim type investments, which is actually taking. Uh, we're, we're a little bit quieter on that uh, now right. because we've been focusing quite heavily on uh, Canadian stuff and Australian uh, stuff. We're building uh, as big uh, positions as we can in Canada and in Australia. Uh, because we think those those markets and a lot of private projects are available in those marketplaces yeah. as well, not just the public listed companies. Uh, we're, we're we're stoic supporters of the of the of the UK market, despite the fact that it seems to be horribly uh, unregulated in many cases, and uh, and then it's and it's a bit uh, volatile. But uh, we we've made considerable amounts of money over the years in on in the UK on AIM. Uh, and uh, and on the main market, and we'd like to uh, carry on doing that. So, uh, but in terms of uh, uh, opportunities worldwide now, the uh, the difficulties that we have over here uh, at the moment are replicated on the ASX in Australia and the TSX in Canada. Pretty much all the resource markets are being pummeled. Uh, so uh, there are opportunities everywhere. No, that's great, Paul. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Talk to Share Talk and Share. It's it's no problem. And if anyone has any good suggestions, uh, but if if you don't mind uh, on on good stocks and good ideas, then if they could uh, email me, uh, which is a really a cheap way of saying I want to avoid doing initial research and just get lots of good good investment opportunities through the door cheaply but it's paul.johnson at valuegeneration.co.uk and uh, and it would be great to have some more ideas come through no that's brilliant thank you paul okay thanks 
Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.